to our Alhamdulillah nature. Salam alaikum salam. And also good morning to all my friends. Uh, thank you so much for the opportunity that has been given to me. So my name is Fatia Noreka Rahma. And today I would like to present my proposal with the title is Systematic Literature Review of Cooperative Learning Strategy in English Learning. Okay, we start from the chapter one that is introduction. There are four research background in my research. The first is English has become a crucial subject that is mandatory for students to learn in almost all levels of education in Indonesia. So because English has emerged as the most commonly used and widely recognized as international language. So the importance of English as a means of communication is reflected in the ever increasing demand for a professional who possess fluency in uh, language. And the second point is primary focus of English language instruction is on developing the four key language skills of listening, speaking, reading, and also writing. So those are the essential components of effective language learning. So each of the skills must be given equal importance and emphasis in English language classroom. And the second point, uh, the third point is the researcher argues that cooperative learning can be used as a learning strategy for senior high school students. Okay, so uh, high, school, high school students are at a stage of a social and cognitive development where they are uh, able to work effectively in groups and benefit from the perspective and insight of their peers. So moreover, high school students are often more motivated and engage in their learning when they feel a sense of connection and also belonging to a group. And then the last point is co cooperative learning is effective for second language learners as it creates a supportive and collaborative environment in which students can practice their language skill. Okay, so by, by working with others, students are will encouraged to use the language in authentic and also meaningful ways, which can enhance their ability to communicate effectively. Okay, by those research background, I formulated into three research questions that the first is how does the use of cooperative learning strategies impacts English language proficiency among senior high school students? And the second is what problem that students face in, in, in learning English that can be overcome by all cooperative learning strategy. And then the third is what are the conclusion of the studies on cooperative learning strategy for senior high school students in English learning? By the research question, the research purpose of this research is first is to discover the impact of cooperative learning strategy in student English language proficiency. The second is to find out the problem that students face in learning English that can be overcome by cooperative learning strategy in high school students. And the third is to give a conclusion based to the information related to a cooperative learning strategy. Okay, and then we move to the chapter two that is a literature review. So I already divided into three points that the first is English language skill, second English language learning strategy, and also the third is cooperative learning. So the first is first point is for English language skill. There are four aspects of English language. The first is listening, is the ability to receive and understand spoken language. And good listening skill will enable speakers to understand the message being conveyed and respond appropriately to the speaker. And the second is speaking, the ability to produce and articulate spoken language. Uh, so the effective speaking skill that also required uh, non-verbal communication such as eye contact, gestures, and also facial expression. And then the third is reading, is the ability to understand the written language. So uh, strategies such as skimming, scanning, active reading can also be helpful in improving reading efficiency in comparison. And also the last is the uh, writing skill is the ability to produce written language. So it, uh, it also can be known as uh, the ability to use language to communicate ideas, opinions, and information in a written form. And then we move to the second point, the English language learning strategy. The first is definition. Definition of LLS is a conscious thought and action that learners use to comprehend learn and recall new information in the second or foreign language. So the goal of using language learning strategy is to make the learning easier, faster, more enjoyable, self-directed, effective, and also transferable to a new situation. There are six classification of English learning strategy based on expansion. That the first is metacognitive, 
is the use uh, used to plan, monitor, and also evaluate one's own learning. So uh, by using this strategy, learners can become more self-directed and also autonomous, and they can take control of their own learning process. And the second is cognitive, used to process information such as analyzing. So by employing cognitive strategies, learners can better manage the information they receive and making it easier to remember and use it later. And then the third is social. Social is used to interact with others to enhance language learning. So by using this strategy, learners can gain the confidence in a social situation that practice using the language in a real life context and build strong relationship with others who are also learning in the language. And the fourth is effective is a used to manage emotion and related to the learning. So the focus on these strategies is managing emotions such as anxiety, frustration, lack of motivation, and promoting positive emotions such as confidence, enthusiasm, enjoyment, and also uh, the motivated be in learning experience. And then the fifth is memory related, is used to retain and retrieve information that is useful for learners who struggle with memorization and have a lot of information to retain and also need to remember information for a long period of time. And then the last is a compensation strategies is the use to overcome limitation in one's language abilities. So uh, in the strategies, learners can communicate more effectively and develop a deeper understanding of the language they are learning. And then we move to the third point that is about cooperative learning. So cooperative learning. First is theory of cooperative learning. There are four uh, theory of cooperative learning. That the first is cognitive development theory. That is conflict among, among ideas of controversy is a central to a cooperation. And also the second is social cognitive theory that views cooperation as the shared belief of group members in their collective powers to produce desired result. And also uh, a behavioral learning theory that individuals will repeat behaviors for which they are reinforced group will behave in the same way. And then the last is social interdependence theory that individuals for uh, will seek outcomes that are beneficial to all those with whom they are cooperatively linked. And then in the 2.3.2 uh, definition of cooperative learning. Uh, so cooperative learning is an instructional strategy with organized students in small group so that they can work together to maximize their own and each other's learning. And then there are the techniques in a cooperative learning. There are team per share, uh, jigsaw, round robin, students, teams achievement division or STAD, team game tournament or TGT, uh, reciprocal Reiki, Reiki teaching, and also rally table, and also bamboo dancing method. And then there are types of cooperative learning that are for formal cooperative learning, where students work together for one class period in several weeks to achieve shared learning goals and concepts jointly. And then the second is informal, where students work together to achieve a joint learning goal in a temporal or at home groups at the last four from a few minutes to one class period. And then the third is cooperative best group are a long-term heterogeneous cooperative learning groups with stable membership. And then the last is constructive controversy that involves the discussion of the advantage and also the disadvantage of proposed action aimed at synthesizing novel and creative solutions. And then we uh, look at the chapter three, that is research method. So this research is conducted with systematic literature review, where the researcher will zoom in and look at the record, to find similar or interesting finding things. So it is because the purpose of systematic literature review is to answer specific question, best and explicit, systematic, and also replicable a search strategy with inclusion and also exclusion criteria identifying studies to be included or excluded. So for my, for my research object, I have five elements that I have to focus on. 
that are from PICOC. Those are the population, the target group for investigation, for example, like people or software. Uh, so the population of my research is the, co the cooperative learning strategy in English learning itself. And then the second is intervention, determining the aspect of the investigation or a problem that is of interest to the researcher. So the intervention of my research is students' difficulties on English learning. And then the third is comparison, is the aspect of investigation that will be compared with the intervention. So the comparison that I will be compared is the successful cooperative learning strategy in English learning. And then the fourth is outcomes, is the effect of the intervention. So the outcomes of my research is students' ability in English is increased. And then the last is context or the background of the investigation. So the context of my research is, is the effective learning strategy in education. <coughs> and then we move to the technique and tools of data collection. So the data search process needed for this study is conducted through the site Google Scholar uh, using Publish or Paris software to facilitate finding the required journals. So then search for journals by entering keywords or, or title, cooperative learning strategy in English learning, using some criteria and limitation to determine whether the data is suitable or not for this research. So there are uh, seven inclusion criteria. That the first is data use is empirical research within the period from 2018 until 2023. And then the second is the data is obtained from the search Google Scholar. And then the third is data use is only about cooperative learning strategy in English learning. So I will not include any other strategy for any other subject. And then the fourth is data use are both qualitative and quantitative research. I will not divide it because I will like to uh, receive both uh, type of data. And then the fifth is the level of data based on senior high school only. So I will not include any other level of school. So And the sixth is the article resulted will be examined and categorized to subtheme to ease the findings. So what I mean subthemes is I will uh, divide it into like the skill, what skill are being increased or what techniques in cooperative learning are being used. And then the last is the setting is at education in the area of English language only. So this is the data analysis, the search screening of the article founds. So I have already found uh, 29 articles, but two of them are invalid. Uh, the means of invalid is not a journal, but a thesis. One article that title and abstract do not match. And the 17 article that doesn't match with the inclusion criteria, which is not an empirical research and not... Um, for senior high school students. So this is the appendix of using Herzing Publish or Paris by uh, entering the title word cooperative learning strategy in English learning. There are 29 uh, article found. And then this is the nine article that I already selected based on the inclusion criteria that I found until now. Okay, uh, those are uh, these are for me. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, we'll send it back to Sir Urai all and all my friends. Thank you. Okay, thank you, uh, Fatia, for comprehensive presentation. Yeah. All right, so now we proceed to the question and answer session. Mm, I'd like to invite Tanku Oktarisa yeah, to read some response and questions. Please have your time. All right, thank you, sir, for the opportunity. Uh, first of all, I want to appreciate uh, Fatia's presentation today. Uh, I think you did very well. So there are several suggestions that I would like to convey for your presentation. Uh, here, uh, I, don't, I don't see that you write down the scope of research and previous study. It would be better if you work it down in your proposal so that readers can know the scope of your research and whose research you think is very good for you 
to make reference to in the previous part of your study. Then uh, here you you write that the research you will use is research in 20, 2013 and at 2013 to 2023. But what you include in the attachment uh, in the appendix is only from 2018. So my suggestion is if you are only looking for research in 2018, uh, it's better it's better in the data tool section section of your collection in your proposal. Just write that research you use from 2018 to 2023, even though uh, you you have already write it from your PowerPoint. So uh, my question that uh, my, my question is. Corporate learning strategy always relate to work in group, so can be in pair or small, can be in pair or small group. And how about students that have individual character? So I think I think uh, that's all for me. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much for the suggestion, Tengku, and also thank you for the question. So the question is, what about the students that have individual character in the implementation of cooperative learning, right? So, uh, yeah, okay, there must be one or two students in class that have individual characteristic. But I have read about a teacher role in cooperative learning strategy material. So this is why teacher play an important role in the application of cooperative learning strategy because teacher has to uh, consider how to make the class still effective. Teacher has to decide um, the size of the group and then what the methods are being used to assign the students in the group. And then the role of each member have be directed clearly. So uh, while learning process, teacher still has to monitor the students learning in their contribution in a group, I think. So it means teacher can still observe which student that doesn't feel enjoy or comfort when working in a group. And it could be a challenge actually for the implementing of cooperative learning itself. So I think to address this issue, it may be uh, helpful to start by acknowledging and respecting students' individual learning preference. So uh, one way to do this is to provide students with choice in how they participate in cooperative learning activities. And also additionally, um, it may be helpful to provide clear guidance and expectation for group work, including specific roles for each of them and responsibilities for each member of the group. Uh, so this can help to ensure students are more engaged in a group and that all members can contributing in a task. And also, I think is uh, uh, the way is gradually introduced students to cooperative learning strategies and of provide the opportunities for them to practice working collaboratively. So this can help to build their confidence and comfort with group work over time. So it may, it may also be helpful to provide uh, feedback and also support to students as they engage in a group. And also, I think it's also important to including opportunities for reflection after learning process and also can do self-assessment uh, to find out their own perspective about how the group work, I think. That's all my answer. Is that clear, Tengku? Okay, it's clear. Thank you, Satya. Okay. All right, thank you. Now we have one, Rahma Mesa. <coughs> all right. Uh, so, first of all, I would like to give compliment to Fatia. You did a great job for the presentation. And yeah, I think your proposal is already good. But I have suggestion for you to include the procedure of systematic literature review in Chapter 3. So now I would like to deliver my question. There are two questions that I would like to ask. The first one is, 
um, why did you choose cooperative learning strategy among all learning strategies that can be used for senior high school students? And for the second, um, how will you present the answer of your research question? I mean, uh, how will you present the answer of your RQ1, RQ2, and RQ3? Is it clear? Okay, it's clear. Thank you for the question. So the question is why I choose cooperative learning for senior high school, right? Yes. Uh, okay, it's, the reason why I choose cooperative learning is I already explained it but in the research background is high school students, senior high school students are at a social and cognitive development where they can be able to work effectively in group and benefit from perspective and insight of their peers. So uh, because of cooperative learning, our strategies are designed to promote the collaboration and also interdependence among students, which can be particularly effective for high school students who are at a stage of a development where social interaction is important. So the keywords is about the social interaction uh, among the high school students. So high schools, uh, sen senior high school students also will be motivated more and engage in a learning when they feel a sense of connection and belonging to the group. That is the reason why I choose uh, cooperative learning for senior high school. Okay, for the second question is about how I deliver the answer of my research question, right? So, um, okay, actually, I will uh, answer my question in two, two types of uh, two types of synthesis. The, the first is about a tubular synthesis and the second is narrative synthesis. For the question number one and two, how does the use of cooperative learning strategies impact English language proficiency among senior high school students? And then the second is what problem that students face in le learning English that can be overcome by cooperative learning strategy is I will make it I will make it into the table. So the table will be divided into the title of research, uh, the writer, uh, the student's problem in English learning, and also what skills are being improved and also what technique are being used, what technique in cooperative learning are being used. So the, the tabular synthesis is like a table. This is involves uh, presenting the result of the review in a table which which can be used to summarize the key characteristic of the studies included in the review such as the study design the sample size the intervention and outcomes the measures because i want to compare and contrast the findings of a different studies uh, and then for the third question what are the conclusion so in this conclusion i will explain it like an article review so the synthesis, uh, the form will be like a narrative synthesis. So uh, narrative synthesis is like involves describing the main findings of the review in a narrative form. So summarizing is the key terms and the trends that emerge from the literature. So because it can be used to provide a comprehensive overview of a topic or identify gaps in the literature gaps in the literature so i will answer it into two types of synthesis that first is narrative and the second is tubular synthesis that's all my answer is that clear rama misa yes yes it's very clear thank you for the answer okay okay thank you for the discussion now I just like that. Can you stop sharing? Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. <clears throat>
Okay, can you see my screen now? Yes, sir. All right, now, uh, actually, uh, you have pres uh, presented a bit clear, clear explanation about uh, what you are going to do, but there are some still that I need to confirm. Yeah? Okay. Make sure that you are on the right track for your revision later. Now, uh, the first one is cooperative learning. Strategy. Here you you said that uh, this this is learning strategy, but in most cases, operative learning is one of the technique of teaching. So I mean, in the classroom, the teacher created the scenario for for uh, for their students, students they can uh, collaborate and cooperate. Uh, collaborate, cooperate with uh, with our oh, among students. Now, in your because this is systematic literacy uh, review, and we have to search. Now, are you using the keyword for? I mean, one of the your keyword is learning strategy or teaching strategy. Learning, actually, sir. Uh. I'm not sure uh, if it is learning strategy. I can. You you said that you have done some sort of uh, searching and find twenty. Is it twenty nine? Yes, sir. Uh, article. That yeah, is twenty nine article. Yeah, twenty nine article. So. Um, you only selected nine articles. Yes, sir. Based on my inclusion criteria. Uh, you know, cooperative learning is huge topic, and there are so big topics. So, how come that you can come only nine articles during ten years period? Um, okay, so actually, uh, for until now. I only searched it in uh, from 2018 until 2023, sir. So uh, I would like to also ask for your suggestion. Should I looking for article that from 2013 or should I only use five, uh, five years article in the past only? Okay, okay now just before I say, uh, I answer that one. Can you give me one example of from nine article that you find the article sir yeah what 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 is the article okay uh should i uh sharing or not uh, i mean uh uh is it uh listed in your references yes sir so what is the name um wait a minute that the first is cooperative learning strategy in critical. Uh, I mean, uh, the, the, the name of the writer. The name of the writer. Yeah. Hmm. Fuzi, Fauzia, and then Siti, Melanie, and first Salsabi. Name, the first name. Fuzi. Fuzi? Fuzi, Fauzia. Fuzi, Fauzia. Where is it? Mm -hmm. Not listed in my... Oh, can you share your screen then? Okay, wait a minute, sir. You know, a cooperative learning strategy is a big topic and also very sometimes it's already, uh, we can say old, old uh, strategy, very established already. So I don't think that 
only a few articles really uh, investigate this. There will be lots of huge number of publications. Mm -hmm. Now, you can come up uh, with nine articles, it could be almost difficult to to be true, yeah, on the on the nine, unless you have a very uh, strict inclusion and exclusion criteria. So, okay, uh, but what is the minimum of article that I have to use for systematic literature review, sir? Um, it's not about minimum or maximum, actually, yeah, because mm -hmm. we want to know the big picture of, of it and, and and of course in liter in systematic literature uh, literature review the number of articles would be much much fewer than uh, meta analysis uh, or even uh, bibliometric bibliometric even the biggest number as i told you before can be at least 500 articles to be included yeah but usually people, you know, in their publication, the standard publication, they receive a bibliometric uh, paper about 1,000, 2,000 uh, articles. So, so that's why they, the topic should be a bit broad topic, so to cover more aspects, yeah. But of course, uh, even to the broad topic, we can see the, the movement of that uh, or the trends, uh, the trends settler or something like this, or the future direction of certain topic. Yeah. And then uh, meta analysis uh, is much smaller than that, big, uh, much smaller than bibliometric because uh, bibliometric is only a very general picture of the trend. Meanwhile, in Meta analysis, uh, we also calculate some sort of uh, statistic things like that. Yeah. But also, big, big topic, I mean, big number mm -hmm. can be 100 or 200 articles to be included in their analysis. Because in meta analysis, you need to have something like uh, what uh, Tenku last time we already presented the analysis of uh, what do you call it the uh, exercise things like that so in order to have that but you need to have more data because mm -hmm. it can be done it cannot be done only with few articles <clears throat> now the unlike those two kinds so systematic review the smallest number uh, <clears throat> but it doesn't mean that uh, we can limit the the number according to our target yeah actually the limit the limit the limiting yeah the limitation of the number the limit of the number is actually based on the inclusion and exclusion criteria mm -hmm. for example like this if you if you search on uh, the topic like like uh, cooperative learning and then you come up with like 500 uh, uh, point uh, of 500 articles, for example, that the, the title containing of practical learning, for example. And then uh, from 500, you need to, to make it more specific to cut down the number, and therefore you need to have a specific uh, inclusion criteria. You have to decide the exclusion and inclusion criteria. So then the five number, 500 number, will be uh, zoomed in, uh, I mean, more um, specific so than many can be excluded because of the criteria. So let's say from the first round uh, uh, exclusion criteria screening, then your number uh, squeezed into 200, for example. <coughs> that we need still to have more and more uh, process of exclusion criteria to have the, the manageable work, yeah? because 
uh, uh, because a systematic review, you need to really understand the whole, the whole article uh, of a single article. Unlike the bibliometric, you don't need to read the article. It's really your your analysis or uh, your research analysis goes to only the data, yeah, uh, that matched by the application. Uh, the data really really based on the uh, keywords they provided by the writers. You don't need to, for example, look up. Uh, look at the uh, the uh, abstracts or uh, to read the papers. It's not necessary actually, unless that you make you want to make sure. There, uh, because there are many databases does not really goes well, yeah. Or you are not uh, confident with some kind of some data, then you need to to cross check by uh, looking at the abstract, for example, like that. So then you need uh, to do that, but not not in order to analyze the data, but uh, more on, I mean, you reading the article or you reading the abstract is just to fix the data, not to understand the paper. Mm -hmm. uh, but in systematic review, you need to read the, uh, what's that, the article in order to draw some conclusion from uh, people, a few articles like what you have done here from nine, for example. So from nine articles, you can uh, draw some conclusion uh, what you need about uh, this topic. But what, what I'm asking right now is that um, cooperative learning strategy is a big topic. This is a very, you know, very common topic, a very old established topic. And I'm, I'm a bit not really confident with that number. So why on the night? Yeah, what? Uh, how are you? Um, how did you come to night? That's, that's interesting to me. I also think my search strategy is still limited, sir. Maybe it's because I only use Google Scholar. Uh, actually, I can use Google Scholar even. You know, Google Scholar cover the whole world. Yes, sir. Uh, 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 but before we come to that, uh, please uh, I, I confirm once again, what do you mean by cooperative learning strategy? So my question, my original question, are you, are you defining it as a learning strategy or teaching strategy? Actually, my intention is I would like to define it into learning strategy, sir. Okay, so it's, it's very fine if you think that it is learning strategy, but then you have to have the clear definition. Uh, what do you mean by learning strategy? Um, I mean, cooperative learning as learning strategy. Okay. And how you, for example, uh, select, yeah, the the articles for example they they both have the title cooperative learning strategy and the one you take in and the, the other one you you this uh you exclude and mm -hmm. so did you have certain kind of that uh i mean strategy i mean uh, yeah, what you have done in order to choose or or every single article that's containing a practical learning strategy you take in? Yes, sir. I don't know how you take, I mean, how you distinguish between these two things. Do you have any uh, explanation about the, the, dis, the distinction, the difference between learning strategy and teaching strategy? In my opinion, yes. our teaching is uh, can be implemented or instructed by the teacher or teaching, sir. Ah. Uh, kalau misalnya learning itu uh, the choice of the students for using that strategy Strategy's to learn together. Without the introduction from the teachers. Yes. 
Uh, so your your reset goes to that direction. Um. Artinya bahwa operator planning strategy itu adalah terjadi di luar kelas. Ya, itu sir maksudnya. Tapi salah berarti ya sir ya. <laughs> berarti teaching ya sir. Makanya saya mau saya mau lihat contoh artikel yang you pilih itu gitu. Saya mau lihat apakah itu learning strategy atau teaching strategy artikel itu. Makanya saya perlu lihat. Iya yes, sir. Berarti teaching sir. Salah sir. <laughs> Nah, kalau teaching, saya tidak percaya kalau cuma sembilan. Oh, yes, sir. Very topic, you know. Mm -hmm. Nah, uh, kecuali kalau kamu memang memiliki uh, exclusion strategy yang sangat spesifik. Nah, baru mungkin bisa bisa sekecil itu jumlahnya. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't see your exclusion inclusion. Can you? Uh, we, we, uh, I want so once again. Uh, what's that? The inclusion, sir. Yeah, inclusion, exclusion strategy. How okay. criteria? Kalau di sini kan data is used bukan yang ini ya? Uh, yes, sir. Yang itu inclusionnya berarti exclusionnya itu adalah yang di luar dari in inclusion itu, tapi tidak ditulis, sir. Ya, yeah, secara sederhana. Uh, inclusion criteria itu secara implied exclusion criteria kan? mm -hmm. yeah. uh, Jadi tetapi biasanya dalam riset itu ditampilkan dua-duanya Karena memang ada satu ketika yang di inclusionnya tidak jelas disebutkan Tetapi exclusionnya jelas sekali Ya, uh, Misalkan apa data use in, in di sini kan empirical research. Nah, yeah. ini kemungkinan gara-gara ini mungkin sedikit empirical research. Nah, cuman uh, saya uh, mohon maaf uh, mungkin meragukan apakah you mengerti empirical research ini gitu. Bisa nggak mendeteksi bahwa oh artikel ini empirical research. Yang ini bukan empirical research gitu. Bisa nggak ngelihat? Kalau di pemikiran sederhana saya, empirical research itu yang ini, Sir, turun ke lapangan langsung cari data gitu, Sir. Ya, eh. kalau semua riset ya semuanya begitu. Eh, maksudnya, maksudnya tuh, apa ya, Sir, ya? Turun langsung ke lapangan gitu, Sir. Ya, kalau di pemikiran saya. Yang namanya riset, semuanya turun ke lapangan. Um. Cuma lapangannya beda-beda, kan begitu. Ada yang di rumah, ada um. yang harus ke kelas. Ada yang harus ke kampung, ada yang ke, ya gitu. gitu. Jadi kalau itu definisinya ya enggak lah, bukan begitu maksudnya. Oh, ya yes, sir. Berarti ditulis ya sir, inclusion sama exclusionnya ya? Iya. Oke. Okay. Uh, empirical research itu minimal itu adalah ada sebuah evidence ya yang diambil. Jadi kalau kalau apa kalau penelitiannya itu pakai interview misalkan seperti itu biasanya tidak disebut empirical research karena itu hanya pendapat hmm. nah tetapi kalau riset yang baik biasanya kalau dia menggunakan interview dia akan menggunakan data lain juga untuk memperkuat interview itu namanya empirical research tetapi dalam dunia kuantitatif empirical research itu lebih kepada treatment. Nah, makanya ini kan perlu dijelaskan dalam sebuah riset ini perlu dijelaskan. What you mean by empirical research? Misalkan, the research that to be included here is only misalkan riset yang dilakukan dengan experimental study, misalkan seperti itu. Nah, kalau itu yang you cari, saya agak percaya kalau cuma sembilan gitu. Tapi itu pun mungkin masih terlalu sedikit. Tapi kan mencari mencari riset yang empirical itu susah. Karena banyak sekali riset yang sederhana yang metodologinya dianggap kurang 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 kuat seperti apa metodologi cuman perception, observation, apa deskriptif kayak gitu. Itu dianggap 
sebagian atau pakar atau apa itu ya uh, orang riset itu itu uh, weak uh, uh, metodologi metodologi yang yang agak tidak kuat ya, not strong metodologi. Nah itu tidak bisa disebut dengan empirical research. Empirical research itu benar-benar hasilnya itu uh, melalui proses uh, apa namanya tadi itu uh, treatment perlakuan. yang kita desain sedemikian rupa sehingga membuktikan bahwa treatment itu benar-benar uh, berdampak itu empirical nah kalau cooperative learning itu sangat sangat mungkin ke arah sana gitu cuman nah ini makanya saya saya penasaran tadi artikel kamu yang sembilan itu uh, mana gitu uh, saya mau lihat apakah Uh, apa untuk saya kira penting sekali bagi kamu sekarang ini mau mengkonfirmasi me- definisi kooperasi planning satu ya sir oke okay, ada nggak contoh ya. kalau ada judulnya saya sebentar nyarinya di sini I can quickly find the Di artikel. Tapi kalau kamu punya artikelnya, tunjukkan di situ. Oke, okay, share screen. I just want to know perhaps the, the title and also the abstract. Yes, just to make sure. Yeah. Uh, ini, sir. Make it bigger. The effect of using bamboo dancing cooperative learning project. Yes, ya ini pasti uh, apa dalam proses pembelajaran kan? Iya. Ya guru guru menggunakan cooperative learning strategi nah, dengan teknik bamboo dancing. Iya. <laughs> Oke, okay, yeah. berarti kooperasi learning strategi itu adalah teknik mengajar. Gitu. Teknik ya, Sar. Okay. Yeah. Teknik berarti. Teknik mengajar. Seperti yang dikatakan tadi bahwa uh, sebenarnya memang pelakunya tetap adalah student. Ya, student menjadi menjadi belajarnya itu secara kooperatif. Yeah. Tapi yang mendesainnya itu adalah guru. Yeah. Nah, itu menjadi berarti itu teknik mengajar. Kalau teknik belajar, apa strategi belajar biasanya istilahnya. Strategi belajar itu adalah strategi yang dikontrol oleh siswa itu sendiri. Nah, kalau strategi belajar, sepengetahuan saya sebelum tahu kalau ada nah, kooperatif strategi gitu. Biasanya itu adalah teaching strategi. Nah, uh, oke. Okay. Uh, Cuman saya tidak tahu bagaimana kamu menemukan sembilan itu menjadi cuma sembilan. Dua ribu, apa, dua ribu delapan belas ya? Iya, saya dari dua ribu delapan belas. Dua tiga, berarti kan lima tahun. Saya kira cukup situ saja. Tidak usah sampai sepuluh tahun ya. Oke. Okay. Kita ingin melihat tren yang lima tahun terakhir gitu. Nah, uh, I think that's fine. Your your title is fine, but uh, bear in mind that your cooperative learning strategy adalah teaching strategy. Nah, oleh karena itu di dalam literature review kamu kan harusnya bukan uh, kalau nggak salah you talk about uh, language learning strategy kan? Iya. Yeah. Uh, nah itu hubungannya kalau learning language learning strategy. berarti tidak nyambung dengan judul kamu ya teaching strategy jadi kamu harusnya bicara tentang teaching strategy there, there are many teaching strategies ya salah satunya adalah cooperative learning strategy itu adalah eh, nama teaching strategy adalah uh, cooperative learning strategy jadi si si LS biasanya seperti itu. 
Nah itu yang dibahas ya. Nah, kemudian kamu perlu membahas uh, systematic review itu. Tapi sebentar, kalau itu mungkin dibahas di sini saja di uh, metodologi. Ya. Di metodologi ya, Sir ya? Iya, yang okay. kooperatif bukan kooperatif apa namanya? Tematik literatur nah, itu. Tematik review itu. Oke. Okay. Kalau yang di apa ya, di di, di reviewnya? Iya, literatur reviewnya cukup itu saja. Kooperatif learning strategi. Oke. Okay. Nah, kamu fokus on aspek di situ, aspek apa saja yang mau difokuskan ketika kamu Uh, apa uh, peneliti ini nah kalau untuk menentukan fokusnya apa saja lihat pertanyaannya your research question di sini nah let's talk about your research question your research question di sini kan how does the use of corporate learning impact on proficiency oke okay. berarti corporate learning and proficiency kemudian what problem berarti The cooperative learning challenges. Jadi ketika ketika guru melaksanakan pembelajaran menggunakan cooperative learning, permasalahan apa saja yang mereka temukan. Ya. Nah kalau itu kan menjadi inclusion criteria kan itu. Nah itu kalau itu membuat sedikit saya percaya karena tidak banyak riset yang melaporkan tentang word problem. Ya, biasanya mereka hanya menguji efektivitas of that strategy biasanya di situ. Kemudian what are the conclusion? Nah, berarti kamu akan me, me, me apa namanya? me summarize gitu ya. Yeah. Semua conclusion uh, yang di yang telah dilakukan oleh para research dengan menggunakan cooperative learning strategy. Oke. Okay. Nah, ini pertanyaan kamu ini harus sejalan dengan inclusion and exclusion criteria. Karena harusnya pertanyaan itu menjadi inclusion kan itu. Hmm. Jadi kalau di dalam eh, melihat pertanyaan riset kamu tadi Berarti ada tiga, yang pertama itu adalah, apa tadi itu? Uh, the, the, the use of cooperative learning. Iya, kita mau melihat dampaknya gitu kan. Mm -hmm. Nah itu berarti penelitian kamu, maksudnya penelitian yang kamu cari itu harus yang kuantitatif. Harus kuantitatif. Ya kan, yang harus menghitung, melihat dampak, melihat efektivitas dari program dari apa uh, ini ini. Nah, kalau yang kalau seandainya kamu mencari penelitian itu itu saya yakin juga tidak banyak. Nah, itu makanya saya bilang uh, kriteria inclusion exclusion itu sangat penting gitu akan lebih jelas, akan lebih clear supaya kita itu ketika uh, kamu bilang oh, saya cuma sekian gitu ya. Kita itu percaya gitu, memang sulit dari cari penelitian yang model-model tertentu gitu. Nah, uh, begitu juga tadi yang problem, what problem, what conclusion. Kan? Nah, sebenarnya what problem sama what conclusion itu dua uh, apa uh, harus berasal dari jenis penelitian yang berbeda. Tapi tidak apa-apa, it's very fine. Uh, berarti kamu ada inclusion yang lain lagi gitu. Berarti inclusionnya itu adalah uh, penelitian uh, bisa penelitian kualitatif ya dan deskriptif yang fokusnya adalah pada evaluasi uh, teknik mengajar atau strategi mengajar uh, cooperative learning itu. Kemudian, lagi tadi ya, uh, yang inclusion itu. Makanya dalam inclusion exclusion itu, akhirnya lebih kepada kamu mau nyarinya kemana gitu. Nah, tadi ya. Ini data kan, data use, empirical research, data is obtained, data is used only, 
kepraktikan seperti in English teaching kalau sini nanti ya. Iya, Sar. Uh, kemudian bahwa kualitatif, kuantitatif. Nah, ini misalkan apa uh, kamu juga misalkan uh, penelitian-penelitian yang bersifat Uh, meta analisis, systematic review itu di exclude. Kemudian penelitian yang melaporkan tentang misalkan persepsi itu di exclude. Uh, uh, apa attitude siswa terhadap cooperative learning misalnya gitu itu di exclude karena itu tidak masuk. Nah karena uh, di dalam systematic review begitu juga meta analisis apalagi bibliometrik, memang Uh, salah satu pekerjaannya itu adalah mengumpulkan artikel gitu sehingga oleh karena itu kita salah satu finding riset kita adalah menunjukkan jumlah jumlah artikel saya sekian gitu kan seperti yang sudah kamu lakukan itu ya yang ada dua yang ini yang ada sembilan artikel untuk di dianalisis Nah, kalau ini nanti benar-benar saya harus koreksi, harus saya lihat kamu apa proses bagaimana sampai ke sini ini harus di apa <tuh> sebenarnya kalau <tuh> proposal tidak harus sampai ke sini sebenarnya oh. kemarin ya, waktu tengkuk saya biarkan juga sampai di sini karena kalau sudah sampai di sini sebenarnya ya sudah mengerjakan riset. Hmm. Kalau proposal itu cukup sampai di screening itu, screening proses. Yang lebih utama dijelaskan adalah teknik Anda searching artikel. Hmm. Kita kan belum anis, uh, search strategi. Search strateginya ini yang perlu benar-benar di, dijelaskan. Bagaimana Anda me, mencari data. Kalau Google Scholar ya sebenarnya Uh, kalau untuk penelitian yang benar-benar anu ya, itu mereka tidak mau menerima Google Scholar ya. karena Google Scholar itu sebenarnya uh, database yang benar-benar campur aduk gitu lah. Dia dia benar-benar tidak rapi dan lain sebagainya bisa overlapping dengan yang lain-lain. Tetapi untuk kita yang nggak punya akses kemana-mana ya Google Scholar ah. Uh, akses kita nah, oleh karena itu mungkin harus dibantu dengan teknik yang lain gitu bagaimana kita menemukan uh, apa artikel yang benar-benar uh, berkualitas gitu uh, ya strateginya itu tidak hanya menggunakan Google Scholar ya seperti yang sudah saya saya kan juga sedang meneliti nasib kita sama tidak punya akses ya <laughs> ya ke apa database yang bonafi gitu ya karena tentulah kita cari yang yang gratisan karena gratis ya kita bisa di situ nah saya tidak hanya menggunakan search engine nya saja jadi saya itu pakai following following up follow up strategies gitu saya memang mulai dari Google Scholar tetapi saya cari misalkan artikel yang yang relevan dengan penelitian kita dapat satu dua lah begitu ya nah dan situ saya kembangkan lagi tapi artikel itu harus artikel yang benar-benar bagus berkualitas misalkan memiliki status fokusnya misalkan uh, atau cinta kalau cinta pun mungkin cinta paling atas lah baru bisa nah yang kemudian setelah Karena saya meyakini begini, kalau seandainya artikel itu ditulis oleh memang pakarnya atau minimal memang researcher gitu ya, bukan orang yang baru belajar research, ya. nah dia akan menggunakan referensi, referensi yang memang berkelas gitu, atau dia telah membaca artikel-artikel yang berkelas. Nah saya mulainya itu mencarinya justru bukan lewat searching tetapi lewat uh, referensi jadi hmm. referensi misalkan uh, siapa kamu dapat apa satu artikel misalkan ditulis oleh 
Hasna dan Ginting misalkan ya. Hmm. Nah, dan situ kita lihat apa referensinya seperti ini lagi. Hmm. Tapi Hasna dan Ginting ini harus terpublis di uh, di, di jurnal yang bonafit gitu. yang memang punya status reputasi internasional Q1 misalnya atau Q2 sehingga kita kita tahu bahwa referensi mereka itu adalah sesuatu yang juga berkualitas. Nah kita nyarinya dari situ. Jadi we 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 use like a snowballing technique, ya. snowballing technique uh, apa kriteria. Nah tentu itu uh, perlu waktu yang cukup panjang. Tadi pertanyaan kamu menjadi relevan, bahkan tadi kan kau nanya sebenarnya um, apa? Logisnya itu berapa sih jumlahnya gitu ya? Nah, bisa. Mungkin bisalah kita kita setting seperti itu. Walaupun secara metodologi riset sebenarnya tidak begitu. Cuman karena kita dengan kondisi kita yang tidak memiliki akses terhadap database yang yang uh, well structured gitu ya. Jadi kita memulainya dari Google Scholar. Sekiranya kita yang membatasi betul itu. Kita batasi uh, jumlah artikelnya dengan catatan bahwa uh, uh, artikel yang kita pilih yang sembilan ini misalkan benar-benar artikel yang kelas berkelas gitu. Jadi kita we we I amin mean our our uh, analysis later will represent ya yeah, the the big picture of this topic. Ya. Yes, kira judul tentang cooperative learning itu masih sangat relevan. Uh, mas, kalau saya sendiri masih penasaran itu seperti apa orang menggunakan dan dan apa dampak. Why? I think that's that's good. Yeah. The topic is too good. So I think what you need to clarify is the the searching strategy and the screening. Uh, the screening strategy. Kira itu ya. Yes, uh, dari saya. Yang lain-lain pun saya sudah oke. Okay. Tinggal yang poin-poin tadi yang saya sudah kasih apa, sudah kasih in apa in uh, feedback yang perlu diperbaiki. Okay. Uh, tinggal tinggal yang ini, tinggal yang screening saja. You can you can ah uh, you can have an other systematic review article so you have to learn more uh, with uh, with better example that you. Uh, tetapi nanti kalau untuk benar-benar uh, seminar mungkin perlu bimbingan lagi lebih lebih apa ya intens tetapi yang jelas ini sudah bagus sudah punya shape apa okay, good shape kalau menurut saya tinggal memperbaiki yang tadi nah, saya poin. Alright, right. ya saya kira itu dari saya. Do you have any question before we close the session? Uh, actually, uh, no sir. I have already write all the suggestion you gave to me. So I'll revise it. Mm. I'll do a revision. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I also record this, yeah, this session. So later I can upload this. And also for other students, if I haven't uploaded your recording, so please let me know because I am overwhelmed with the work. So some many times that I forgot. Uh, about the recording and that I haven't uploaded and also sometimes I have uploaded but I forgot to let you know yeah, that your recording is already uh, on the list yeah, on the YouTube channel. <laughs> all right, so I think that's all for uh, for this meeting. So we, I'm going to see you again at one o'clock today uh, for the second presenter. <laughs> Right, so I close this session. Yeah, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. See you again.